Hi everybody, I'm Ben from Claire.io, and I'm going to be showing you how to use both iframe and div-based embeds so that you can share your Claire.io scenes in your blog posts, in your raw HTML pages, or wherever you want on the net. Um, the end result, what we're going to build up to today, is a page like this where you can have your interactive scene, and then you can create HTML elements that then interact with that scene. What you can do in terms of interaction is almost unlimited, and it's very easy to do. So let's start at the beginning. What you want to start with um, is you want to find in our documentation our embedding scenes page. It's in Learn, SDK, Embedding. And then this will have written documentation for what I'm explaining. Okay, so now let's say that we want to take this scene from the beginning and uh, start sharing it. So I just cloned an example scene. In this case, it's the Nissan uh, GTR Nisbo. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that it's publicly accessible. So by default, scenes are not publicly accessible. Um, but in, if you want to be sharing it through your web page, you have to make it accessible. So you just come here and you make public access and make sure that public is clicked. Now anyone on the internet can view it. Okay, so we're going to save that. And then the second part of doing an embed, the iframe embed, is to click on the share button and then find the embed code. It's right here. Just copy and paste that, or just copy it, and then close it. Now what you want to do is you want to take that embed code and paste it into a, an HTML page. I have a simple HTML page here that's empty, and I've just take that, taken that iframe and pasted it in. What I want to do then is I want to adjust the width and height to match aesthetically what, I, what I'd like. So in this case, I've changed the defaults um, to 800 by 500. And then what I get is this page here. I'll just refresh it. You can see here that it loads up. It's got the you can configure the background color in the um, scene if you don't like this uh, default gradient. And then it loads up, and it's interactive. And if there's an animation, you can play it. If you'd like the animation to autoplay, just go to this iframe embed, and then add to the URL autoplay equals true. Save it, and then refresh. And now you'll notice that the scene once it's finished loading will automatically play any of the animations that are in the scene. So that's simple iframe-based embedding. Um, there's a second type of embedding that Claire.io supports. It's called div-based embedding. And instead of opening, uh, instead of embedding it as a sort of sub-web page within your web page, this embeds the page on a div element within the context of that single web page. And this changes a number of things. The main difference it achieves is it allows um, scripts that you write in your web page to interact with the Claire.io scene. So let's build up to a div-based embed. Everything that I've done before, which setting the scene public, we have to do again, or we have to make sure that it is publicly accessible. And then we want to start with an empty um, HTML page. From, this, um, from our documentation, we provide a script, and it's this one right here. You want to cut and paste that into your web page. I've done this, and I've put it here. We support both jQuery-based embedding and non-jQuery-based. I'd recommend going with jQuery. It just makes everything easier. So I've also added here, I'm using jQuery. So I include jQuery first, and then I include our script. And then the next thing I do is I create a div element. In this case, I've called the div element Clara-Car Embed. And I've set its, its height, and I've set its background color that it's going to use while it's loading. And then I create a script here where I get the jQuery element, or the div, via jQuery, and then I call dot Clara, and I give it the scene ID. The scene ID is the same one that I was using with the iframe embed, except this time I have to code it in. What's interesting about this is, while I'm doing this um, load immediately, you can actually listen for a button click on this div element first, and then trigger the load on demand, and you can use your own image to show before the, the um, scene loads. So that gives you a lot of options there. So what this does is this now looks like this. So when I refresh the screen, we're going to load up the script. And you see it actually loaded a bit faster in this case, and it's still interactive. So one thing that's interesting about Claire, and not everyone notices this right away, is that when, I'm, when I have the scene here, and I make any change to the scene, we have a console window or a log window. And it constantly echoes every modification you do to the scene. And it's echoing it in JavaScript. You can see it down here. It turns out that you can use, uh, this, is, um, this is actually programming code that you can execute 
to make those changes again. So let's take this example scene and let's add some buttons to the web page. I'm going to do that here. I'm going to add a bunch of buttons using standard HTML. I'm going to make red body, blue body, light one, and light two. And then using jQuery, I'm going to attach a click handler. In that click handler, um, there's a function, standard, uh, the standard way you do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the embed div, and I'm going to call clear on it again. In this case, I'm going to call the clara function, and I'm going to pass in script. I'm going to pass in a, a JavaScript object um, that it only has a function, and it's called fn colon function. And in that function, I get a ctx object um, as the main parameter. And then I can copy and paste from the log window these commands, and I can paste them here, and they will execute in response to those buttons. So what I've done is I've taken the main body paint, and you can see here if I scroll up a bit, um, or I can just do it again. I'm taking the body paint material and I can set its color. And then when I do that, you'll see that in here the log, it's showing body paint, hash material, and then standard, that's the standard plug here, or the standard um, operator, and then I'm setting its diffuse color. Well, that's what I've copied and pasted here, except I'm setting the color in this case to be red. And then the second button here on blue, I'm using that same thing, but now I'm setting the color slightly differently. You can see it was 0.8 in R, now it's 0.8 in B, or blue. And then what I've also done is I'm changing the light colors. And I'm, basic, I'm first querying the light color to see what the current light color is in the scene. In this case, I'm getting the color of the, the um, first point light, and I'm checking its red value. The red value is uh, greater than zero. I then say that light is enabled. And then I'm setting that intensity to zero. If it wasn't enabled, then I set its intensity to one. So now I have got a toggle for the, the lights. And I do that for both the lights. And you can see again that I've basically cut and paste my, my adjustments of the light color are exactly as how it is in the log window. And I'm just cutting and pasting that into my JavaScript that runs the web page and interacting with the ClearIO um, div embed. So this is the exact code that we're now going to run. Let's see what that looks like. So here's the scene. Um, it's actually not going to load up blue this time because I've actually modified the scene. And our changes are live. So if you modify the scene, that's actually how it's going to load up in the embeds. There we go. So now the car is slightly pink on first load. But we can click the buttons. Red, blue, toggling on one light, and toggling on the other. Now I've only showed a few simple changes here, but you can transform objects around, you can show and hide them. You can even have a timer run and you can modify the position of an object or camera during that um, run. So uh, there you go, that's how to create interactive embeds using Clara.io and I think that it couldn't get too much simpler than cutting and pasting code from our log window. Thanks for your time.